Hi, Andrew Glazer here from GlazerTutoring.com, and today I would like to teach you how to balance the equation of C4H10, which could be known as butane, but there's several other isomers. When you get to organic chemistry, and by the way, if you do get to organic chemistry, please come back, check out our channel. By that time, we're going to have a lot of help out there for you on that particular subject. So we have C4H10 plus O2 yields carbon dioxide plus now water. So how do we do this? Simply place in some little lines to the left of the compounds. That will represent the location of the coefficients that you're going to place in. All right. And then uh, next, just remember the general principle that however many atoms you have on the left hand side of the reaction must balance however many atoms you have on the right hand side. OK. And then what I'm simply going to do is just take a look at the first element I see, which is carbon. And I want to balance the carbon. Now, in order to balance carbon, I prefer to work with elements, in this case carbon, that is only in one molecule on the left hand side, which it is, and only in one molecule on the right hand side, which it is. Those are ones that I balance. I do not like to work with elements that are in more than one compound on one of the sides. I skip them, okay? In this problem, we won't have that issue, uh, except for maybe oxygen, but it's going to be safe for the end anyway. But uh, in, in, a, uh, in any case, so carbon, how many do you have? You have a total of four. That's where the subscripts come into play. So you get four carbons on the left. Now, somehow that has to equal however many carbons you have here on the right, which there is a one. So obviously this is not a true mathematical statement. Four does not equal one, but we have to balance it somehow, okay? So what you wanna do is you wanna place in a coefficient, okay? I'm gonna show you this. You wanna place in a coefficient, I'm gonna call it X. Now, do you wanna place the X here or do you wanna place the X here? Now, mathematically speaking, you can place it either location, okay? If you place the X here, you're saying some number here times four. So some number times four better equal one. When you do this out, X will equal a fraction. We really would rather not work with fraction if we can avoid it, all right? So we're not gonna put the X there. Instead, I wanna put my coefficient on the lower side, meaning where carbon is less. All right, if I place the X there now, if I place the X here, it basically goes next to the one. So it's one times some number should equal four, and obviously we know what that is, it's just four, right? So X was simply going to be equal to four. So now I have four carbons on the left, I didn't change that, but now I have four carbons on the right. You simply think multiplicatively, okay? Next, let's move on to the hydrogens. So we have 10 hydrogens here on the left. We have two hydrogens on the right. And remember, hydrogen is only in the water compound on the left and maybe this butane molecule on the, uh, excuse me, high, uh, water on the right, butane molecule on the left. So I wanna work with the hydrogen, okay? So I wanna place a number here on the lower side since I only have two on the on the right, excuse me, and uh, if this isn't confusing enough, I can keep my left and right straight. So um, yeah, and we have 10 hydrogen on the left. So we have to now balance that, right? So I wanna place a number of five here because five times two will equal 10. And that balances that out, okay? That's how simple that is. All right, now let's move on to the last element, which is oxygen. So you have oxygen in this compound. You also have oxygen now in two of the molecules on the right-hand side. Now, since oxygen is the last one I have to balance, I'm gonna work with that now, okay? But if you started with oxygen, if this were the first one you wind up, wound up choosing, I would not do it first, all right? Because it is in both compounds on the right-hand side. So I would have just come back to that at the end and finished it up at the end. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to balance that oxygen. So simply write down the number of oxygen you have here, which is two. Somehow that has to equal now, however many oxygens you have here. Please do not forget about the coefficient now. Once you place in a coefficient, you have to take that into account for your total oxygen value. So when you multiply four by two, you have a total of eight now oxygen coming from the carbon dioxide, plus now a total of five, right? Oxygen coming from the water. So somehow this math has to work out. Two must balance, you know, two must equal uh, 13 somehow. Now, obviously, it doesn't at the moment. So I need to add what? I need to add a variable, x. Now, you can choose where to place the x. You can place it here. You can place it here. Or you can place it there. One of those three spots is better than the other. Okay? This is the best spot. Why? What do you think? This is the best place because it only affects oxygen's value. If you start messing with this coefficient over here, now you screwed up carbon. You already balanced it. Why do you want to do that? And if you place it over here, now you screw up hydrogen. Why would you want to do that? You already balanced it. So I want to place a coefficient here. It'll only affect oxygen. You see?
So what does that look like now mathematically? What this looks like is some number times two better equal whatever the heck I got going on that side. So it's two times something better equal whatever the heck I got going on on that side. Just hitting puberty. So here we got now 2x will be equal to solve the math equation, right? Math, it looks a little scary and intimidating, but it's going to be very beneficial to you in the future. All right. So this is going to be 13 over 2. So x is equal to 13 over 2. All right. That's the value. That's the value you need to plug in here. So go back up here and plug in 13 over 2. And now the equation will be beautifully balanced. All right. Let me just erase and clean this up a little bit. If you want to go back and check, be my guest. Be my guest. Be my guest. I'm watching a lot of those videos now oh, with children. Oh, actually, I forgot how great they are. You know, when, I, when you're 20, you're like, Beauty and the Beast? What the heck? What? I'm not going to. Then when you get to your 30, it's like, oh, I love watching Beauty and the Beast. That's when you have children. Um, anyway, uh, I digress. I digress. So getting back to business here. Um, the equation is fully balanced. Okay. It is fully, fully balanced. Um, but... We're not finished. Even though it's balanced, we're not finished. Okay, why are we not finished? Because you can't have a fraction of an oxygen molecule. You can't have a fraction of any molecule. A fraction of a molecule it does not exist. It's like a fraction of a person, right? Oh, look, there's Billy over there. He looks like he's about half of himself. What does that even mean, right? Unless you're, you know, speaking about it not technically, right? But if Billy's half of himself, Billy ain't no more, right? Well, ain't no more would be opposite. So Bill Billy's no more. Billy's no more. OK, now um, we need to take care of this. OK, we need to take care of this. How do we do it? Now, you might say, man, I kind of screwed myself up because I have a fraction in here. Now it gets more complicated. But that's the nice thing. It actually doesn't. OK, it actually doesn't. And the reason why is because whatever the denominator is of your fraction will be the value that you're going to multiply each coefficient by. OK. Whatever it is. So now let me get rid of those silly brackets. So there is an invisible one here. I'll plug that in. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 2 times 1 now. Then I'm going to do 2 times 13 over 2, 2 times 4, and 2 times 5. Just do the math now. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll erase some of the values and just do the math. What's 2 times 1? It's 2. What's 2 times 13 over 2? What's 13? And that'll actually always work that way. But let me show you how that works. So it's 2 times 13 over 2. You can place this 2 over 1, right? 13 times 2 is going to be 26. 2 times 1 is going to be 2, right? You multiply the numerators, then multiply those denominators. And then you say, can 2 go into 26? And sure, it can. It can go into it 13 times. In other words, you could reduce it down to 13 over 1, but that's just simply 13. So you see how we arrive at the 13 now. You don't have to do all that because whatever this denominator is, as long as you're using this denominator multiplying by it, it'll always just equal whatever numerator value there is. So you don't have to go through that complicated math all the time. But in case you weren't sure, that's how you would approach it. So this value here is a 13. Okay. Now what's 2 times 4? 2 times 4 is simply 8. And then what's 2 times 5? 2 times 5 is simply going to be 10. And now this is the fully balanced lowest coefficient ratioed equation. Okay? And you can check everything if you like. I'll just erase these little lines down here. You can check everything if you like, right? How many carbons do you have now? Well, you take 2 and multiply it by 4, so you have a total of 8. How many carbons do you have on the right-hand side? Well, there's a 1 there, so 8 times 1 is going to be 8. So, oh, that balances. Okay. So 2 times for hydrogen, 10. That's going to be 20 hydrogen on the left. You got 10 times 2. Oh, look at that, 20 hydrogen on the right. So that balances. Great. Oxygen now, 13 times 2. What do you got? You got a total of 26 on the left. How about oxygen? Well, you got oxygen in this compound, so you got 16 over there, right? And then you're going to have 10 over here. So wait a minute, 16 plus 10 is 26, and that balances the 26, and voila, we're all finished. All right. This is the balance equation. Guys, thank you so very much for tuning in. I really do hope this helps. If it does, give us a hand. Like, subscribe, tell your friends. Also, check out our channel because we got thousands of videos out there, not only in chemistry, but we got tons of stuff in physics, actual solved problems for you. Okay. we That's what we specialize in. All right. We specialize in doing actual problems, practice problems, trying to help you attain that A on your exam. All right. Nothing would make us happier to help you. So please check out our channel. Take care.